Hey, how are ya? Nox is Flack here, and I am fully committed to playing with every ship in this game. I am addicted, and I'm ready for the next playthrough, even though the other one ended last week. We have already played through the Crestal twice, and it is time for us to play with the Offspray, Offspray ship, excuse me. But we will not be naming it the Boring Offspray, we will be calling it the Legionnaire, which is a way cooler name for a ship. We will be using Layout A. I will be driving Nox's flag. On engines will be Who Am I, who is terrible. On weapons will be the legendary Aquaga. And on shields will be the ever loyal Saucy Boy. I like this ship, it's got a lot of special things to it. And without further ado, let's begin. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. For some reason they're telling me about the door subsystem and how updating it will reduce fire spreading. Blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about the ship. It starts with the Burst Laser 3, which is one of my favorite weapons in the game. What I like about the Burst Laser 3 is it fires three shots and only costs two power. So, if you can have two of these, that's six shots for four power, which is a really good deal, but I do remember one playthrough where I had either three or four Burst Lasers, and I think I was unstoppable. But, unfortunately, the Burst Laser 2 does take a while to load, so we're going to be counting on Fequaga leveling up so that he has a faster charge for weapons, and also we're counting on just having more weapons than just this later on. Also, you'll notice this is loading. This is our artillery beam, which is specifically comes with the Offspray style ship. When it hits max, and obviously there needs to be another ship, it fires a beam across the entire enemy ship, and it would appear... It doesn't appear, excuse me. It pierces all sh uh, shields, and it does one damage for each room it hits. Uh, it, you don't get to aim it, it just does it on its own. This is awesome, unless you're trying a boarding strategy, and you forget it's on, and then it destroys the other ship while your boarding party is there. But, I like this ship. And uh, my only real complaint is, is that early game, everything takes a while to load, so you have to take a lot of shots before you can shoot back. You arrive near a damaged and dilapidated space station. It appears to be abandoned, but you detect faint life signatures on board. So last game we did this, I boarded the station and nothing appeared to be there, and I was certain microscopic organisms were there. So let's try it again. Hey, human corpses are scattered across the station. You can't read this. You find the source of the signal, a lone survivor that locked themselves in a storage closet. You quickly retreat with them and tow back to the ship and hope they can recover enough to be of some use. You never saw that name because that is the ever unlucky World War II. No space there. Ranger, let's see if you can redeem yourself. World War II Ranger, what do I want you to do? I think we need someone on the door system. See all the doors go from orange to gray. So now we have control of the doors. And uh, we can lock them if people uh, teleport onto the ship. Let's save current crew positions and let's move on. My, I think I'm just going to... Because I don't really have enough scrap to really want a store yet. So I'm just going to bounce back and forth here. It looks like I can exit. The penultimate step could be either of these to the exit. So let's get to it. Let's get through sector one. Advanced Rebel Automated Ship remains stationed near a small Rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. Attack the automated ship to get the storage cache. Obviously. Alright, we don't need to heal. Let's increase dodge. No! That is annoying. Mm. So they're hacking with a hacking drone. This is the worst. Our weapon system. And they're using an ion weapon to keep our shields down while slowly cutting into our ship. Oh my gosh. Take their hacking out. Alright, their hacking's down. Let's take their weapons out. We need our dodge to go back up. We can't miss anything at the moment because our drive is down. Oh my goodness, World War II Rangers. Save us from my own bad choices. 
Hey, see we missed because you repaired that. Way to go, World War II Ranger. Goes missing or dies in all of my videos, but still willing to fix the ship. Let's go here. Our artillery beam just destroyed the other ship. That was awesome. You salvage what you can from the broken ship. We're investigating the station, and the station had nothing. It was abandoned or stripped clean. But I think that was a pretty good example of what I was discussing. The, the burst laser 2 and the artillery beam both take a while to load, so you take a lot of hits early game. But late game, this ship it can be very strong if you can make it past the early game. Alright, everyone's back to where they should be. Let's do this as a stress beacon, because it's story. You find a number of ships fleeing from a small space station. You hail them. What's wrong? Help, we're being overrun by some sort of giant alien spiders. Every single time I have sent the crew to help, giant alien spiders are no joke, I lose someone. I have never seen a different outcome, and I don't want to lose World War II Ranger again. So I can't risk fighting some unknown alien on every backwater station. Why can't we just shoot the station? Isn't it empty? Like, we could take out the giant spiders. A Mantis military scout seems to have just finished a salvage op on a nearby wreck. They have no time to waste with warnings and appear to wish to fight. Let's load. Let's increase dodge from 15% to 20%. Looks like they have a single shot laser beam and an ion weapon, so that's going to take our shields down. But since they fired in the wrong order, like dummies, uh, that didn't hurt us. So let's take out. Let's turn on auto fire. Take out their weapons. They only have four health already. Alright, take that out. Getting our boy Fake Quagga some experience. Although it's not quite the same as the last ship that had four guns that all fired, and each time he fired a salvo of four, his level went up by four. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial substantial collection of useful scrap material. Very good. Another distress beam. Beacon, of course. Love the background in this game. You locate a nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread through I, You know, in the first series, I couldn't say that either. Let's say violently. <laughs> they were setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, blue are like guaranteed wins. So the Engi are the robotic people, maybe they can calm everyone down. The rock crew can prevent a riot by his massive massiveness, so we'll do that. It's unlikely that rock's impressive immune system is susceptible to a human virus, so you send it in. It's able to intimidate the workers long enough for the colony forces to set up the quarantine. Their leaders offer a reward and assure you that they'll find a cure as soon as possible. Not bad, not bad. I want to go here now. A rebel ship hails. We did not fight a war to let a single Federation ship shatter our dreams of a better galaxy. He locks weapons. All right, we got an idealist over here. So he has a beam droid, drone, excuse me, and a beam weapon. So literally, because I have one layer of shield, he cannot do anything to me. So I can just take my time. Oh, so I, he's got some dodge capabilities, so we'll shoot that. Oh no, he's firing a beam that can't go through my shields. Oh, one of our shots took out his drone. That's very funny. But unfortunately, that meant I uh, didn't do any damage that time. Oh my gosh, he appeared right again. He's lost dodge. Now we're going for shields. Looks like our artillery beam's going to get a shot in before this guy's done. Very nice. Let's go for oxygen, because we're mean, but I bet our... Very clean, easily handled. Who goes to war without the ability to take out shields? Let's go down to this one. You come across a pirate in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship. You quickly receive a transmission from the pirate. Stay out of the fight and we'll make it worth your while, son. So that's actually not a bad bribe because it has two fuel, but I like scrap. Pirate ship stops its pursuit and locks weapons onto your ship. So they have a missile launcher, and I don't like that. So we're going to go... I'm going to let him hit me with one salvo. I'm going to take shields out on my first salvo, and my second one will be taking out weapons. I shot the missile midair. That was nuts. I don't think I've ever seen that. I've shot plenty of drones flying around my ship, but never the missile. 
Nice, good targeting. Ooh. Fine, our previous offer was not generous enough. Let's improve it. So six fuel is unbelievable, and uh, so I'm gonna take it. <laughs> That's awesome, okay. On to the next beacon. You begin charging your FDL drive and do a quick scan of the local planet. You find the ruins of a recently destroyed Federation colony on the surface. There must be a rebel ship in the vicinity. Go looking for it. After a short, short search, you find the rebel ship. Let's hope he's as easy to defeat in combat as he was to find. So we got a, a drone that can take our shield out, which is irrelevant actually because he only has a missile weapon, which goes through all shields. I shot another drone midair out again. Our hull is at 75%, which is okay, but it'd be nice if I could repair that somehow. Just keep up the fire, right? Because he can't go through my shield, it'll repair itself. All that's really happening here is Saucy Boy, every time he takes down the shield, is gaining one level of shield expertise. World War II Ranger taking a missile to the face like a champ. This is like a good way of... Oof. The enemy ship appears to be powering it's up its FTL is trying to escape. So it's always risky when you see the FTL charging and the officer surrender, but I am going to say no. I'm going to target the drive so they cannot run away, but it looks like my artillery beam is going to solve the problem for me, and there it is. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Still no store. I'm getting kind of upset about it, so I'm going to... I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to go here, and then that's the exit. Now, if I see a store, I might make a bad life choice. You recognize the ship as a well-known slave trader. He hails you and offers you laborers to, for cheap. I'm attacking the slaver scum. We're going straight for weapons. World War II Ranger, I don't think you're needed at the moment, so let's get you all healed up, because you did take a missile to the face. Okay, weapons are down. Let's take out shields. The goal when attacking slavers is you want them to surrender and give you a free slave. But I'm freeing them, so it's okay. Oh, you're offering me a slave by the name of Duck Sheep 88? Yeah, okay. Welcome to the crew, Duck Sheep 88. I'm sorry about the slavery that you encountered before, but we pay you here. Not well, though. Not well. I want you on sensors. So right now we have what I consider to be the necessary sized crew. If I were to get a teleporter, which I normally liked to do, I would need two more people. Or I would want two more people, and that'd be the max of what a ship could carry. No store! The store must have been down here. Both the stores must have been down there. Scan show a remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. The ship hastily misses you. Stay out of this, sir. You'll be next. Concentrate. Fire on. I'm gonna attack the pirate. And uh, I'd like to say I'm doing it to protect these people, but I need the scrap on your ship. So, now that we're being honest. Get the shield up. Oh, very good timing. That beam could have gone through. Take out the shields while they're dealing with the fire in the weapon room. Oh, their weapons are completely down. And there goes shields. Let's take out dodge. It is nice to know that, like, if everything takes a really long time, this artillery beam comes in and saves the day. Let's take out weapons. Looks like they're both back up. One more salvo, salvo should do it. They were dumb and fired the uh, beam before taking out my shields with their uh, laser weapon. And take it out, artillery! Beautiful! You pick through the remains and contact the settlement. That's a double victory! Still, no store, but I can just eke out one more jump in this sector. You detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Obviously we're attacking to save them. Yeah, that's what it is. So I'm going to go for the drone because this one's going to be pretty constantly firing. Although Saucy Boy is really leveling up from this. Oh, we got a fire. So we're opening doors to the outside in order to... Uh, yeah, let's do shields. Take the oxygen out of this room, which will put out the fire. Close it now.
now. Shields are down. Let's take out this. Reason I'm not taking out their weapon is they only have one, and every time he shoots, Saucy Boy levels up in his shield usage. Another double? Double victory points? What would you call that? Double loot? You arrived at a long range beacon. When the FDL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Obviously, we're exploring the asteroid field. I happen upon an abandoned mining site. A few mining drones are left behind and could be repurposed. Very cool. Let's look at the next sector. So, my choices are pretty limited rock controlled or pirate controlled. Rock people love missile weapons and they always go through shields and they always do a ton of hull damage and often cause fires. Pirates are more of a mixed bag. Let's guarantee lots of fights, and fights means I get lots of money, but more importantly, what comes next? Here I have a choice of one unidentified green, one identified red, and then red, 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 and then a green. But if I go south, two greens to choose from. Another green, another green, another green. It just seems like a safer path, considering I want to make it to sector eight and then win. Reports are true, this area has been under the control of pirates for quite some time. Some traders still attempt to trade with the few settlements that remain, but they do so at great risk. So I'm going to see, I don't see a store immediately, so what I will do is I'm going to upgrade our artillery beam, our power, our artillery beam again, and our power again. And you'll see that the loading bar time just went down dramatically, and I'm feeling it, so I'm maxing out our artillery beam. <laughs> And now that is going to fire very quickly. I'm going to be a little upset if we run into a store like one jump from now, which would be two jumps from this spot, and I'm broke. But I'm going to have an artillery beam that fires very quickly. And that concludes part one of my FTL playthrough with the Legionnaire. Tell me in the comments what you think about it. Feel free to leave a like. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. This has been... Noxus Flack, and I will see you in the next one.